Oh. oh my. I feel like I've been hit by a ton of bricks. You just finished playing Page Master and being a puppet for a book bent on destroying us all. Ah, that might explain it. So, what's your plan with this episode? Oh, right, right. That's what I was doing. Uh. Rah. Hello, old friend. I'm going to review the game as a whole. Hello, I'm Oddball. I just finished with the Page Master video game, and I'm not going to lie, it's not that bad of a game. What? In fact, it's probably the best game I've ever featured on the show. Is he delirious? Nope. Best game? Bar none. Uh, I think I'm still dreaming. Uh, what's going on here? I'm just saying, you can't judge a book by its cover. What the hell bullshit is that? Can't judge a book by its cover. This game sucks, the movie sucks, and you know what? That cliche sucks. If I had judged a book by its cover, I would have gotten away with draining your misery. What do you say about that? How stupid are you? Uh, huh? Yeah. I couldn't prove anything. Nor could I get you into Misery Mire if I could. But now you kind of given me both the proof and the access to do this. Do what? Well, what are we going to do with them? I suggest finishing the job. Experimentation? You know what? I got a better plan. All right. Sorry for the interruption. Also, for lying on that first part. Vitrice is right, this game is very bad from every angle. Okay, for starters, the graphics actually aren't that bad. They were trying to keep close to what the movie had for graphics. Problem with that is that the movie had some pretty bad animation. I don't recall the big bad wolf spitting pigs, or killer books for that matter. And actually, that brings up another problem. The enemy design is just horrendous. The books are all blue. There's no difference in them. How hard would it have been to palette swap these? And some of them are hidden behind foreground scenery, which is kind of just a dick move. Then again, I'm not 100% surprised, as I learned early, that this game can get you easily trapped in a level if you fail to have the running shoes. Some enemies are just basically invulnerable and should be avoided. Which wouldn't be a problem, except they're also the fastest enemies in the game, appearing on screen and then they'll be in your face. Or they will block the path like Long John Silver here. The audio, although not pausing every time you jump like Home Alone, is still forgettable. And the length of the game is just unbearable. With only three continues to get through three areas, yeah, difficult is an understatement. But unlike Battletoads or Snake Rattle and Roll, there is nothing to this game that makes you really want to play it. You aren't going to go to your friends and brag about beating Page Master. I'm counting the days till I forget this tripe. This game is very comparable to Catwoman, except here's kind of the fun thing about that. Um, Catwoman had boss fights, which were alright, nothing spectacular, but nothing to rage about. In fact, I, I think I remember kicking a guy into an electrical box. That was kinda fun, relatively speaking. This game has no boss battles, which is kind of a mixed blessing. They could have screwed them up like they did everything else, or it could have been like the saving grace of the game. The mini games are useless. End of story. The items that help you get along the way are kind of easily removed by damage and might as well only be considered as extra hit points. The shoes should not be a goddamn thing. You should just have normal running speed. I don't get why games will make your default speed so damn slow and then give you the item to move faster two seconds in, i.e. the normal freaking movement speed. <sighs> this one adds more to that, actually, by taking it away if you get hit. Which happens a lot. And again, this can sometimes trap you. And as for the movie... Oh, come on! Why did they hire him for this? <laughs> Sorry. Ign 
ignored that. I got Vitreous doing some research for my uh, next game. You know, just because a movie is bad doesn't mean the game is, but this time it was. The movie is out of my wheelhouse, so I'm not going to talk too much on it. Anyway, the Nostalgia Critic already covered it better, uh, except for one little thing. Uh, he said the movie gives you no reason to become invested in the books, because it barely scratches upon the surface. Although that is true, I think some of these scratches actually draw blood. In other words, they give away kind of big spoilers in them. I can almost forgive them for doing it to Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, because I don't even think you guys kind of knew that the Doctor being Mr. Hyde was a spoiler in the book. But what about Moby Dick? The whale killing Ahab is the very last thing that happens in that book. Then again, maybe telling kids to read an almost thousand page book about whaling isn't the smartest move. Finally, okay, let's just end this. Final chapter for Page Master. Don't bother. Ugh. I, I almost looked it up on, I actually did look it up on Game Facts. And you know what? They're agreeing with me. Don't bother. No one bothered it there either. As for the thing about the library cards, screw it! It's a mystery that I just don't care about. Maybe Vitreus. Hell no. I watched the movie. I, I don't I don't think you need to know anything from it. Just just watch the ride on YouTube. It's a lot better. You could have waited a minute. Uh, I just came from my book. I'm taking it down to the deepest depths of the basement where no one can use it again. Oh, well. Here you go. I do wish I got to hear how the story ended, though. A story about a faraway land, a princess, a hero, and a monster? Yeah, you know it? Yeah, I've heard it before. It ends with the terrifying realization that the princess, the hero, and the monster were the same person. And actually, um, so was the servant. Not a bad ending, I guess. Yeah, it was a twist. Uh, I've had a bad day. I'm gonna go lie down. Right, well, that's the end of Page Master. I'm Oddball, and I'm tuning out.